WAJR and the AJR News Network welcome you to Wellness Wednesday, North Central West Virginia's premier medical talk show presented by Fairmont Regional Medical Center, the only hospital in West Virginia to be recognized four years in a row as a top performer by the Joint Commission. Now, here's your host for Wellness Wednesday, Kyle Wiggs. Thank you for joining us Wellness Wednesday on WAJR and the AJR News Network. Again, I'm Kyle Wiggs, and uh, with us from Fairmont Regional Medical Center is the Director of Plant Operations and Safety Management, and uh, joining us on the program this morning, again, the Director of Plant Operations and Safety Management, Jamie Kosick. And Jamie, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Kyle. Talk about your role a little bit uh, from the facilities aspect of it. I know there's a lot of renovations going on at Fairmont Regional Medical Center. So just start there. What's in the works? What's going to change? And how will that enhance uh, what you do at that facility? Well, as a lot of people know out there, Kyle, uh, we um, were purchased by another organization, Electo Healthcare Services out of California. And uh, since that time, uh, we've had a, uh, an upgraded facility management plan as far as improving our facilities. Uh, during the last year, we've made um, multiple upgrades to our facility. Uh, some include some just interior renovations, flooring, wall covering, ceilings, that sort of thing. But we got more involved with some bigger projects. We're, we're looking at uh, elevator modernization. We've got five uh, elevators that are going to be completely modernized. Uh, we've got uh, right now we've got two air handling units, brand new air handling units that, that have been installed. Uh, they should be up and running by uh, November or December 15th. In addition to that, the spring of 2016, we're looking at two additional air handlers. Uh, we're looking at additional roofs. We're looking at two more additional elevators to modernize. Uh, among outside groundwork, paving, uh, hmm. signage, you name it, we're involved with it now. So it's been a pretty busy year. So it never ends. Basically, there's it never always ends. a project. In a healthcare, they always say the only constant we have is change. <laughs> so uh, that that holds pretty true for most hospitals in the state, I would believe. When was that building constructed? Uh, our building is basically separated into three separate buildings. The original original founder of, of 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 Fairmont General Hospital way back when was the Cook Hospital. It was a miners' hospital uh, that was prior to 1939. Fairmont General Hospital actually became Fairmont General Hospital in uh, in 1939. We had a major addition in 1972, uh, and then we've had uh, smaller additions since that time, 1987, 93, 96, so on and so forth. So uh, that's when we were still Fairmont General Hospital, but uh, now we are Fairmont Regional Medical Center. How long have you been with the uh, with the facility? I've been with uh, Fairmont Regional Medical Center for uh, 24 years, going on 25 years uh, next October. Okay, so you've seen uh, a lot of the changes. You've seen this kind of modernize and develop into a regional medical center. Oh yes, we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of the changes in the last 25 years. The ups, the downs, uh, the the static years where nothing really happens because of uh, not a lot of funding coming in uh, to be able to do a lot of things. But you know, I have to give a, a great big shout out to the staff at Fairmont Regional Medical Center uh, for adapting and dealing with the change that we have, putting their best foot forward and making us the best hospital that we can be. You oversee, personally, you oversee a staff of about 100, right? Yes. So there are uh, several departments that fall under the facility or, or uh, plant operations department. Uh, those would include uh, nutrition services, uh, housekeeping, uh, engineering and maintenance, safety security, biomed, and of course, we had the laundry and linen as well. So mm-hmm. those, all those departments are fully staffed. And um, obviously very challenging to to oversee those. Uh, those are pretty diverse aspects of the hospital. Well, it is challenging, but, you know, the key there, Kyle, I think with any position is having the right people in the right spots. And uh, I've got a, uh, a management team at Fairmont Regional Medical Center that is second to none. Uh, they do a great job in managing those departments uh, that report to me. We all take care of each other, um, so that's a that's a big plus working for Fairmont Regional Medical Center. We are with Jamie Kosick. He's the Director of Plant Operations and Safety Management. And uh, looking back at some of the things that, that you've worked directly with way back in the 90s, you were 
director of safety, right? Yes. So how has that changed? How has that aspect changed in terms of, uh, obviously, there's probably more uh, l- more layers of, of government regulation and, and safety concerns that you have to deal with. Well, there is, and, you know, uh, 9-11 changed all that uh, for a lot of organizations, just not hospitals. Uh, when 9-11 happened, there was a lot of funding that was put through the federal government through different grant programs that were available. And out of that, um, there became uh, the region, we call it the Region 6-7 Bioterrorism Task Force um, that is in North Central West Virginia. It includes all 13 hospitals within our region. And then there are the other regions within West Virginia too. So we all collaborate, communicate, cooperate with each other. Uh, There have been a lot of purchases made through the federal government through grant funding for bioterrorism, um, training, um, and, a, and a whole gamut of other things that are out there, equipment that can be shared amongst hospitals within each region or within other regions as well within the state of West Virginia. So that's been the hardest thing to keep up with is, is the emergency management aspect of health care, uh, we'll, even with the other regulatory agencies, Joint Commission, uh, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, it is it's your emergency operations plan is a living breathing document and it's always changing and you know what we're dealing with today across the country across the world uh, so I think we're going to have to start taking a hard look at uh, those types of situations and how to care for those types of people in the event that we have these these unfortunate yeah. uh, mass shootings it, it seems like you know it, it's become more and more common and it seems like every time a situation happens like what happened in California just a few weeks ago, you react to that. You kind of fine-tune your plan in terms of Mm -hmm. uh, security and in terms of disaster preparation, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, one of the things that we've done at our hospital recently, um, which we've never done before, uh, we've put the whole hospital in a card access system uh, with different levels of access so we can close the building effectively with uh, literally the press of a button on a computer program. Uh, We can lock everything up immediately uh, to keep people out. Um, Fortunately, or unfortunately, hospitals were always built to let people in, not Mm -hmm. to keep people out. So all hospitals are going to have to take a a, a good hard look at their access to and from security-sensitive areas and what to do in the event um, major um, acts happen outside of the hospital. The good thing for hospitals, and and I know our hospitals in our region, including Fairmont Regional Medical Center and others, is, you know, we deal with emergencies on a daily basis. Uh, They're a microcosm of a bigger emergency, but that's what we do. Uh, If you have an emergency room in your hospital, I don't care what level trauma you are, but you deal with small emergencies every day. So we get good at that, Mm -hmm. and and hopefully we're here to serve and, and make sure that we take care of our communities when when bad things happen. When you talk about a plan for a catastrophic situation uh, similar to what we saw in California, or if there's a threat to the hospital, mm-hmm. if there's a direct threat to the hospital, who do you who, who's involved in that plan? Who do you work with? Local police, state police, FBI? Who um, who gets involved? You know, every every community, every county, um, every county um, have <coughs> involved pretty much everybody, just like you imagine or mentioned, uh, city police, county police, state police. Uh, you know, it goes as far as the American Red Cross. Uh, everybody's local emergency planning committee is 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 a little bit different in that mixture, uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of the the same things uh, in each committee. Um, basically, each county emergency operations center, 911 center, they're kind of in control when something like that happens. The good thing amongst hospitals is the fact that we have implemented some some programs. Uh, one of the best things that I think that we have out there is a program called Live Process. Um, we can talk in real time to every other hospital within our region, and they just recently opened that statewide. So we can share resources, we can talk, we can do a lot of these things right over the computer in real time uh, in the event that these things happen. Share information. That's share probably information. the most critical and thing. Share staffing. I mean, it depends on the disaster. The bigger the disaster, the bigger right. the need. But uh, we uh, we have an agreement. I know in in Region Six Seven, it's a memorandum of understanding that basically says if we have a major regional disaster, 
we agree to share everything. All right, let's talk about more positive things. Okay. Uh, I know Fairmont Regional Medical Center, the Joint Commission, uh, you've been uh, awarded and rewarded uh, for some fine work you do when they come in and inspect. Just talk about that. First of all, explain to people what the Joint Commission does and how a facility like yours has to answer to mm-hmm. that. Well, the Joint Commission is a, is a survey body that comes in uh, every three years. Uh, they can come in more often than that. They can do a random, unannounced survey. But basically, their purpose is to survey the hospital to make sure that we are, are deemed to continue to receive uh, funding from Medicare, Medicaid, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it is a pretty much a week-long survey, and it's broken up into many, many different categories. Uh, my categories are basically uh, broken up into uh, seven different functions. Uh, one is safety management. Uh, another one it would be equipment management as it relates to clinical equipment. They want to make sure that we, we take care of all of our clinical equipment that's related to patients. Uh, the third would be uh, hazardous materials and waste management. What do you do with those materials when they're left over? How do you get rid of them? You have to have all your documentation for that. The fourth one would be utility management, your major utilities, your gas, your water, um, your electric. How do you take care of those? What kind of backup plans do you have in place to provide continuing services at your facility. Um, Then we have uh, emergency management as a part of that, and life safety management is also part. Life safety deals more with fire safety uh, issues, fire doors, stairwells, uh, penetrations in your from one floor to the next, from one floor wall to the next, your sprinkler systems, Mm -hmm. your fire alarm systems, and that thing. So there for a week, and uh, they they do a pretty thorough survey. It's it's a it's a, actually a not a bad process. Uh, it's, it, they they educate why they also do that, uh, and at the end of the day, they'll they'll leave you with a report what your deficiencies were, and and you need to have a plan of action to deal with those deficiencies, and um, and then you you go on with life after that. Yeah. But uh, we had our last survey in July. Um, uh, we ha- we are still an accredited body. Uh, we had a few deficiencies, but our plans of actions were all approved, and and we're still in business. And uh, the the joint commission lauds the work that you do. I mean, the Fairmont Regional Medical Center is is very highly regarded. Right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they have a thing called best practices out there, and if if you do something that they think is a best practice, they they take it back, and they'll share it with their with their organization. They'll share it with other hospitals within the within the country as well. Um, I know you're alluding to the, the top performer yes. awards that we've received in the last four years, and those are a little bit out of my lane. Uh, those are more clinical awards mm-hmm. on a top performer for a couple clinical issues that we have, but we are the only hospital that's won that four years in a row. Okay, good. And uh, we've talked about the emergency management. Uh, we've talked about uh, security issues, and uh, these are all things that uh, that our guest today has to deal with directly. Uh, we are with Jamie Kosick. He is the Director of Plan Operations and Safety Management at Fairmont Regional Medical Center. We'll take a break. We will continue our conversation after this. Stay with us. Now back to Wellness Wednesday, presented by Fairmont Regional Medical Center on WAJR and the AJR News Network. Wellness Wednesday. On WHAR, the HAR News Network, we are with Jamie Kosick, who's Director of Plant Operation and Safety Management at Fairmont Regional Medical Center. And uh, let's talk a little bit, Jamie, about both short-term and long-term, the plans for the future, facility improvements, and uh, what's in store for 2016. Start there. Well, Kyle, as I mentioned earlier, like most hospitals or a lot of hospitals in West Virginia, there's been a quite a bit of deferred maintenance and that's a a really nice term meaning (laughs) they just don't do a whole lot because there's no funding to take care of it. Um, I don't think it's uh, uncommon for a lot of hospitals in West Virginia to deal with that issue. So our focus uh, this past year and going into next has been kind of repairing the heart and lungs of the system, those big infrastructure pieces that we have in place uh, so we can start doing those other things, the other remodeling projects that we need to do within the facility. So uh, for 2016, we're basically looking at some additional roofs. Um, we're looking at a, a couple more air handlers. One mainly serves the, the whole first floor of the hospital, and the other one um, is going to serve our OB-GYN um, unit. Uh, we want to do some remodeling up there, so we want to make sure that we have the appropriate air to serve that area uh, before we do that. After that, we're probably going to sit down and do a facility uh, assessment of existing equipment that we have 
to find out what needs to be refurbished, replaced, uh, or not touched for the next few years. Um, longer term, we're looking at uh, boiler plant upgrades, chiller plant upgrades for cooling capacity in the summertime, and those types of issues. So we're always going to be involved in something along those lines. And with the advancement of technology comes new in new ways to care for patients, new equipment that's necessary. Just kind of talk about that and how that evolves as the years go by. It's pretty amazing. You take a CT scanner, for example, I mean, just a couple of years, and, and they're already ready for an upgrade because of the technology and how it advances. So uh, two or three years ago, we did put in a new uh, CT scanner. It's due for an upgrade right now. Uh, we're in the process of doing that. We're also in the process currently of building out an in-house MRI unit uh, that we can serve our patients. Uh, the last uh, 15 years or so, we've been dealing with the mobile MRI unit, but now we're going to have one actually installed within the hospital. Uh, that should be up and running in February of 2016. In addition to that, um, other types of medical care equipment that we have in place uh, recently, we, we completely replaced our cardiac monitor system. Uh, for our cardiac monitor floor, our intensive care unit, as well as our emergency department and down in uh, surgery and recovery areas. Um, we have purchased um, two new radiology procedure rooms. One is a rad fluoro room, uh, brand new from GE, and another was a typical uh, a radiology exam room with a, an x-ray machine in there. Um, probably going to do another one in 2016, I would think, um, because uh, some of the equipment that we have is old. And we're in the process of purchasing new beds for our patients. I mean, we've replaced beds uh, in um, the ED. We've, uh, we're looking at replacing beds on the floor. Uh, one of the nice things about being part of a larger system is the fact that you have a little bit more uh, uh, negotiating room when you're dealing with mm -hmm. a larger system. You have those economies of scale that you can negotiate with. Uh, the other nice thing about being part of a larger system is is we share some of those resources, some of that equipment between hospitals. If one hospital is, is getting all new stuff and their old stuff is really not that old or a lot newer than somebody else has, we can share that uh, equipment, test it out, make sure everything works, and, and it, we're actually improving. How many beds are in the hospital? We are currently licensed for 207 beds. Um, um, our maximum capacity is going to be right around 100, and 100, 100 to 50 to 155. Uh, currently, our census is running about 115 mm -hmm. on you a daily basis. You talk about replacing the literal beds going through that process. Is that something that's ongoing, or do you do them all at once? Do you do a few at a time? And well, normally you do a big batch at a time. I mean, you're going to do. You're not going to do one or two. Uh, you may not do 50 to 70, but you may do 25 and 25 and 25. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we get pretty much everybody involved from our clinical engineering folks, biomed folks, to do some electrical safety checks, our engineering folks, our housekeeping folks, our nursing folks, to make that change out happen as, as quickly as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. What are f some other challenges of just day-to-day -day stuff like that, equipment like beds that wear out? I mean, Well, I mean, it, 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 we're always fixing something. Um, I always tell people, just it's just like a big house. There's always something that's going to go wrong. <laughs> a big house with 207 uh, beds. Yeah, in it. Your, da your daily to-do lists never end up being exactly what you planned in, in this business uh, because there are so many changes that happen on a regular basis and so many different decisions that have to be made on a regular basis. But what we have in place for equipment, both on the patient care side as well as utility side, is We've got some really good preventive maintenance systems in place. So what we hope to do is we hope that we do all those things right so we uh, stop anything from breaking down in the future uh, and we catch it ahead of time. We're a little bit more proactive in that respect. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you've you got a lot on your plate. You've got a lot of different areas that uh, it seems like you oversee. What What's your education background? Where did you go and what did you do in order to get to this position? Well, Kyle, I'm a native West Virginian. I was born in Fairmont, West Virginia. I uh, went to Fairmont State College at the time. It mm -hmm. wasn't a university then. And I, uh, I got a, a BS degree in business administration with a minor in biology. From there, I went to West Virginia University uh, and, got, and received a master's degree in public administration. I uh, got that in 91 and was actually looking for a job. And I was doing an internship at Fairmont General Hospital at the time. And uh, I was in the right place at the right time. <laughs> so you started there. And then obviously... 
probably the most valuable resource that you have is 25 years experience at absolutely that it's uh it's been a it's been a long ride it's been a good ride um and i have learned a lot mm-hmm. still learning every day and uh different challenges arise every day different challenges every day all right well this was very informative it's interesting to uh, uh to hear things from the operational standpoint and uh obviously everybody's concerned about safety and and plans for um, you. You don't want to think about it, but in your mm-hmm. job, you have to think about it. Yeah, have yeah. to be prepared. And, and Kyle, you know, another shout out to all those safety managers out there, and all those other hospitals within our region. Uh, I just want our folks out there and our listening audience to know that uh, hospitals in North Central West Virginia are doing everything that we can do to keep people safe and take care of our own. So, uh, uh, big shout out to those folks because I know they work hard. All right, very good. Jamie, thanks for coming in. Gotcha. Very informative. Uh, Jamie Kosick with us. He is the Director of Plant Operation and Safety Management at Fairmont Regional Medical Center. You've been listening to Wellness Wednesday on WAJR and the AJR News Network.